Um, because in other places we're told, in the genealogies, so here's a decent answer. In the genealogy, we're told that Cain built the city. So, so you know, a lot of times writers will do this. Moses is reflecting on events of thousands of years before when he writes that. So the city existed then. So when he refers to the city, he's not saying that the city was already there necessarily. So I think there's ways to reconcile those. But that is an interesting question. Again, stop asking the Bible to answer scientific questions. No, but that's a good question. Anybody want to know where the Bible came from? Okay. All right, so here's where the Bible came from. There's The Bible is in two testaments. I got one, yes. Um, the Bible exists in two testaments, the Old Testament, the New Testament, okay? Now, the Old Testament is the canon of literature that belongs to the Jewish people. And there's a long history in how the Jewish canon was developed. But effectively, we have in the history of Israel, when Israel became disobedient to Yahweh God, um, they, were, they were taken into exile. They were at civil war at the time they went to exile. The northern kingdom went first, and those people were displaced. Remember when we talked about how in Babylon, the Babylon tried to envelop all the people into their... That, the northern kingdom did. They mixed with the Gentiles, and they disappeared. They're gone. There's nobody who's like, I'm a Reubenite, right? Like, you never met an Israelite who claims to be a Reubenite because the Reubenites are gone. They have mixed with the peoples of the earth. The southern kingdom, which is primarily the Judeans and the Benjamites and a handful of others, a couple of Levites, a couple of, a couple of, a couple of uh, Danites, the southern kingdom remains pure well in exile. But they mark the return from exile as, as a new era for them. So they had some prophets that happened during that time. You had books like Ezra and Nehemiah that record the histories of those times. A few of the prophets, Haggai, Zechariah, I think, that, that and Malachi and Micah, a couple of them that were prophets in that day. And then Protestants will often speak of a, of a period of silent years, 500 years between Malachi and Matthew. And what's interesting is there were other Jewish texts written during that time. Um, things like Ecclesiasticus, um, First Enoch, um, First, Second, Third, Fourth Maccabees, um, the oh, oh, Tobit, for example, the Book of Tobit, all kinds of different things that came out of the Jewish world, and yet they were not considered Jewish scripture at the time of Jesus. In fact, they're still today not considered scripture by the Jews, and so they differentiated between books that are important and books that are scripture, that are God-inspired scripture. And the Jews even had a hierarchy within that where the Torah, the four, four, first five books of the, the, the Old Testament, the law, and then the prophets, and then the writings. So they even had three categories of scripture, and things that were the writings were subject to the law and the prophets. And even the prophets are subject to the law. So they sort of had a, a hierarchy of importance, even within what they consider the scriptures. As you get to the New Testament, you get a similar model happening where the it's not even the first books of the New Testament that are written. Um, for example, the book of Galatians is probably the, if not the first, one of the first books of the New Testament. It's not even one of the Gospels. But the early church took Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, even though Acts is not technically one of the Gospels, it's continuation of the book of Luke, developing the early church but those five books become sort of the Torah if you will of the Christians so they take the old the same Old Testament that the Jews had then they take those Gospels and you know we have that term like when something's gospel it means it's super 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 true right and we say that oh that's gospel right and that's what we mean those were gospel those could not change those were everything and then you have other things like Paul's letters James, the letter, you know, James' letter, and you know, Peter's letters, and you know, all of those, the, the letters of the Hebrews. Those letters are considered inspired scripture, but submitted to the authority of the gospel accounts. So that you're not going to read Paul and say, "Well, Paul says this about the law," and say, "So Jesus was wrong when he said this." Right? You're not going to pit them against each other. That if you're confused about something the scriptures say. What did Jesus say? That is preeminent, right? You go to the Gospels, and then you have the prophecy, which would be the book of Revelation, that has to be interpreted in light of the whole. And that's the same way that the Old Testament was used. And so effectively, what happens is, 
as the church is thinking through what their most significant things are, 